A disability is something that has a major impact on your life. Every disability is different. And it's never the same thing for two people. I am blind in my right eye totally and partially sighted in my left eye. I was 18 years old. We were traveling way too fast on a gravel road. It broke my neck, my back. My Asperger's syndrome and my cerebral palsy. I have anxiety and depression. People would have no idea just talking to me. Being independent means different things to different people. I want to live in my own house. I want to pay my own bills. Live independently and not rely on other people. When someone is not able to live as independently as they can, it does have a detrimental effect on people's physical and mental well-being. It's no complicated thing. It's just that people with disabilities want to be included. Plenty of people get stuck in ruts when they feel like they can't overcome something in their life. That's where Lyft comes in. Living independently for today and tomorrow. Lyft. We help people of all ages and all types of disabilities find the resources or acquire the skills to live as independently as possible. We serve the southeastern 18 counties here at the Billings office. We have a variety of things that we offer. We can help with grant funding for adaptive equipment. Maybe a home modification so they're able to access their home. We help people to find that funding. Helping people apply for social security benefits. Medicaid, Medicare, housing. They have a peer support group. Peer support, I think, is key. Sharing life experiences is one of the most powerful things to help people who might be new to disability, who might be struggling with their disability. Youth transitions is kids that are transitioning out of high school. They need to learn those adulting skills. It might be rent an apartment, learn how to grocery shop, budgeting. Help someone advocate for themselves in a school or an employment setting. One of our biggest strengths is providing folks with information and referral. If we can't help you, we hope to know who can. A lot of times we'll have a potential consumer call in and they think that they just have one need and it turns out that we end up finding three or four things we can actually do for them. You can just come in and say, hey, I, I feel like I have this going on. Can you help me? And we can, which is so cool to me. I love that. Most of us on staff at Lyft have identified ourselves as having one or more disabilities. That is helpful in many cases. It's easier to empathize with someone when you yourself have struggled with a disability. This is what we specialize in. This is who we are, and this is what we do. And it costs nothing to go to Lyft. It's a nonprofit organization, and they're there to help. Somebody that was a consumer that was working with Lyft was asked to do an art project. He visualized that the balloon helps to lift people up. And then it became the logo, and it stuck. There's been success on all kinds of levels. It's really rewarding to have a consumer go, hey, I was able to do this by myself today. We want people to live their best life as independent as possible. Live as everyone else in society, and live as a part of society, not apart from society. Everybody needs help. Sometimes you just need a little more help, and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. There's plenty of life to live still, and there's a way you can do it. Keep chipping away at it, little by little by little. Knowledge is power. Let's share it for crying out loud. Send us an email, give us a call. We'll do our best to help. We can definitely help figure out what your needs are and get started on that. We're one of many steps in the path to independence and we're happy to be serving people here in the community.
Good day and welcome to Living Well in Montana. Living Well in Montana is a service and program of living independently for today and tomorrow or LIFT, L-I-F-T-T -T, as we like to call ourselves. And LIFT is a uh, what is known as a center for independent living, mean, meaning that we are a center for resources and advocacy for and by people with disabilities um, to help them live as independent as part of the integrated community as possible. Um, we serve an 18 county service area in southeastern and south central Montana, um, including Yellowstone County and the city of Billings. My name is uh, Jed O. Oh. Um, to find out more about LIFT, you can, uh, you can visit our website at HTT or lifttt.org or um, you can give us a call in Billings at 406-259-5181 uh, or in Glendive at 948-8500. Uh, All right. Um, well, it's election time again. We're taping this on the 3rd of October and you know, you can turn to almost any other channel on the dial and be <laughs> reminded that, that it's election time. Um, and uh, so we thought we would have uh, Kevin Gillen here. Uh, he's the field operations guy at uh, the Yellowstone County Elections Office. And uh, Kevin's going to talk to us a little bit about the voting process and um, focusing on access to voting for people with disabilities and he brought a, a, a demonstration here today and we'll get to that in a little bit but uh, welcome Kevin. Thank you very much thanks for the opportunity to be here and, and, and discuss what we at the elections office can do to uh, help everybody vote absolutely. Okay so, so the basics to be able to vote in Montana you have to be 18 Correct. you have to have lived here for 30 days, 30 days. and you have to register how Correct. does how does a person register the registration process is pen to paper um, registration forms are online or they people can come into the office right. and just you fill out um, uh, a registration form process that gives us all of your particulars all the information that we need in order to build a profile for the individual for the state database um, and get your signature. We, we use signatures primarily to confirm as the voting process plays out. If you're an absentee voter, you'll sign the back of the envelope when you return your ballot mm -hmm. and we would check that signature with the application on file to make sure they match up um, in order to be transparent and make sure we're doing our job. So that's pretty much uh, how okay. it plays and, out. And there's, and again, I know that it gets complicated because of legislation and court cases and whatnot, but there, this is, as I said, we're taping this on October 3rd, um, starting in two days, I believe, on October the 5th and running until noon on a, the Monday there before the election, November the 4th. People who want to register have to show up in person at the Yellowstone County Election right. Office or if you're in another county. <clears throat> right, I exactly. The, the window is um, um, up until, oh, I believe as you suggest, it's probably October 5 that um, um, the over the internet type of registration process will end and people will have to present themselves to the election office in order to register to vote okay. and they certainly can do that right. All right. and then of course if all else fails or because people are busy, there is still same-day registration in Montana, correct? Right. There was recent litigation to, to decide one way or the other if um, same-day registration would continue. It stopped, it started, um, and now it's here. And um, okay. we're prepared for it. Right. We'll be prepared for it. All same-day registration, however, in Yellowstone County happens at the Metro Pavilion 
on election day. Okay. You so in other words, you can't go to a polling place right. that you may have been going to in the past and register to vote. Okay. In our all polling places are all in-person polling places in the county at yep. Metra. Well, no, we have nine polling places okay. spread throughout Yellow. We have polling places spread out from Custer to Broadview. Right. The bulk of the voting um, um, precincts um, are consolidated at Metro Park right. at the, the pavilion. For we have this. forty precincts there. Largely the city of buildings, basically. Yeah, and you know we've um, been able to bring in Independence School. Pioneer School um, and Huntley Project and Shepherd are a mix between uh, the Metra and the Yellowstone Valley Electric Co-op where we have a polling place. Okay. Good. So how many um, people, can, uh, you've done this in one form or another for a number of years. Um, 2020 there were quite a, f quite a few people who voted in person? Now, I, 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 mean, I so. really, 2020, I took a, a, a pause and actually ran COVID clinics for Riverstone Health. Oh. So I'm well, not, I believe okay. it was primarily an absentee type it, of it, vote it given was, COVID. But I, I, just, I don't know what the numbers Yeah, I were. don't know what, fair enough. Yeah. Um, but that was the last, again, like this, a general presidential election. Right, right. Um, and I just remember, maybe it was 2016, where people were talking about really long lines. At, but um, mm -hmm. I worked that at Metra, and mm -hmm. those were incredibly long lines, um, right. which is a function of, you know, when you register people to vote, it's right. not a process that you can hurry. Yeah. Um, and, and as a consequence, you know, right. the lines can now we've done a remarkable job I think at at making those lines go quicker um, but uh, there's no doubt it, it takes a little bit of time and you were saying earlier that um, and, and I can include myself in this number like seven out of ten eight out of ten ballots that will be cast in Yellowstone County will be cast um, what in Montana we call absentee, what other states call vote by mail? Right, yeah. 87% uh, sticks in my head, and okay. that may fluctuate to some extent. Right. Um, for this presidential election, I anticipate a, a tremendous turnout across the board, and that would translate to more foot traffic at the polling places as okay. well. Okay, so again, if you're and again, the um, Lyft is available to help um, people, particularly people with disabilities, um, navigate the voter registration process as well as navigate the process to obtain a ballot through the mail or use some other accessible um, options that are available under Montana law. Um, so if, you're, if you need help, if you're seeing this and you need help making sure that you are registered or getting registered, uh, please give Lyft a call at 406-259-5181 and uh, one of our independent living team will be glad to assist you. Um, so before we get to our friend here, <laughs> um, it seems to me that there's another accessible ballot option in Montana for people with disabilities who meet a certain standard, they can apply to the Secretary of State to use, or at least partially use, the uh, same system that folks overseas use? The They can internet, right. for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, that's, that process is out there. It I'm, I'm sure we have a couple of people in Yellowstone County using it. It's not right. as prolific in, in the county. Yeah. It, is an, it is an available option. And um, in, in one, uh, one of the differences between, um, I, I know because we worked on some legislation oh. to try to change this, um, that at the moment 
a person who uses that system because they are out of the country, the whole process is online. For a person with disability in Montana right now, they have to print, they can, they get to the point where the ballot is ready, they have to print out the ballot and mail it in, so. Um, okay, kind of a two-step yeah, process. Um, yeah, so again, that's, though, that's an option. Yes, it is, we, it is an option, options. and, and uh, we, again, we hope to, convince some folks in Helena this next session to allow folks good, the good. access to the complete online process. Uh, if it's secure enough for our troops and our diplomats, it's secure enough for oh. people with disabilities here oh, in Montana. Absolutely. Um, all right, so, uh, and you said you, you're sort of the field operations, so it's a pretty big operation, isn't it? For how many folks do you oversee? Well, we, um, the law provides that you have a minimum of three election judges for each precinct. Right. And we have 59 precincts in Montana now. We just went through a redistricting cycle, right. which included more, made precincts smaller a little bit, added uh, at the same time more precincts. So yeah. do the math, that's, you know, minimum, uh, just just people working the precinct tables, 180 people maybe. Um, there's a lot of people that work in the back end of all that, processing right. ballots, getting ballots ready to go out, absentee, things mm -hmm. like that. But for the polling places, um, you know, it, it depends on where you're at. At Metro Park, like I said, we have 40 precincts okay. and that's just a lot of people, you know, 100 yeah. and a half yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah, um, and we, we our, our judges have to go through training. I, I conduct the training for them. It's, right. it's good for every two years, mm -hmm. so they can go through a two-year election cycle. But you have to be trained and certified in order to work as an right. election judge okay. and trained in all aspects, and that right. includes uh, helping people with disabilities as well. Okay. So we, 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 you know, we find a way to say yes and make sure that we can accommodate uh, needs however and whenever possible, absolutely. Well, Most people vote absentee yeah, because it's, it's a pretty um, yeah. not inclusive or you know, not, not a difficult process to navigate. Right. But we welcome anybody at the polls. Yep, and, and again, one of the, you know, for, for the, you know, the, give and take of the consolidating the polling places, one of the um, advantages is that, you know, I know without doing much looking that, you know, people can easily get into the Metra parking facility and the Metra building. It's, I can't remember which building. You it's the use. pavilion. The pavilion. Yeah, it's the first large and, building and, and off so, six. Because again, some of our you know, when we, when we were, when we had neighborhood precincts and buildings, you know, depending on which school or which church, access was difficult. And it could be, you know, mm -hmm. the first thing we do every time we're having, po we do polling place elections only during federal elections. Right. So it'll be every even year, if you will. We're right. presidential this year. Two more years, it'll be uh, Senate races, but they're federal, yeah. so they're mm -hmm. polling place. Uh, voters, but we accept, we, we walk through all the polling places to make sure they're, they're still ADA accessible. Uh, things can change here and there in some of the schools that we use as well, but um, all of our um, polling places are ADA accessible, that, obviously. That, that's great. Yep. Um, alrighty. So if a person comes to a polling place and needs to um, some help in, again, you get this ballot and you need some help marking it, that's what this machine is for, correct? The okay. express vote? Okay, the express vote uh, was primarily developed and it's an exclusive um, electronic voting machine. It's a photocopy machine really okay. um, that have pre um, loaded ballots on the machine. Um, um, it was primarily rolled out, developed for sight impaired people. Uh, 
It's got right. braille features that we can talk about momentarily, mm -hmm. but um, anybody anybody can use the, the express votes. We don't we don't uh, okay. you know distinguish between who wants to use it and who doesn't. You know who can't. And there's no eligibility uh, requirements. Okay. But if I can back up just a little bit prior to the express vote, um, I've seen in my years um, individuals come to the polls but they can't get out of their vehicle right. in order to come in to mm -hmm. cast a vote. We call that curbside voting. Mm -hmm. So we have a system in play through the law where we take two judges, one from each major party, mm -hmm. go out with a ballot and a secrecy sleeve and mm -hmm. an oath document that the individual will sign. And, and we will allow and encourage the person to vote from their vehicle, not a problem. Okay. Uh, the two judges will then take the ballot back in and cast it in the correct precinct box okay. and fill out the register that uh, what they did on behalf of that particular voter. So curbside's a big um, okay. assistance if need be. Okay, that's good we will We will also see people come in who you must sign the register book in okay. order to be eligible to get a ballot right. and go about your business. But in today, there's people who can't sign for mm -hmm. whatever reason, Parkinson's mm -hmm. or who mm -hmm. knows what. Um, mm -hmm. We have ink pads. We'll gladly take a thumbprint. Okay. We'll gladly take an X okay. or any other kind of distinguishing mark. Some people may have an agent, somebody who comes with them, who is on record to help them, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, uh, to, who could sign for them as right. well. That's, that's also a popular uh, option if need be. And then we have certain individuals, I've helped people in the past who come in and they need assistance just going through the ballot. Mm -hmm. Again, we get we'll always use two judges. Right. And we find a quiet place and sit down with the individual. Um, I would read the ballot to them. Mm -hmm. They would tell us what mm -hmm. they would like to do and the other judge would mark the ballot for them. So we, we cover all of those bases as well as we can and well within the law, obviously. Obviously. And then you have the express vote. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. We could So the, the express votes, Yellowstone County has mm, a minimum of one at every precinct. We have nine precincts. Okay. We keep one in the office during the election so people who would like to can come in and use that as well. Right. Uh, Metro Park at the pavilion will mm -hmm. have three okay. uh, probably express votes out and ready to go and uh, one then again at every other precinct. We will have, we have the uh, sticks that load up the um, um, ballots right. if you will and the machine will, we have a test ballot if I can run one. Um, sure. Um, in fact, I'll let you vote it Okay. Uh, if you'd like. Um, it, it gives you a sense of what we do, but for, for the, the actual election on Tuesday the 5th, um, when you place a ballot in right. the machine, it will come up with the 59 precincts. Right. And so you, you can touch screen or the uh, pad, if you will, mm -hmm. um, is full of braille right. to allow. And of course, we have earphones. Yeah, I saw that. And and you can see earphone. the earphone jack. But we have another <laughs> jack too, and that is a sip and puff oh, function sure. for people yeah, with I, mobility issues. We, so yeah. we can cover a lot of ground with yeah. a lot of different circumstances, depending on oh. what we're doing. You know. What what we what we need to accommodate? Oops, um, but I test every I load all of the machines right. prior to the election, and I test them all. And I'll close my eyes and I'll use the uh, uh, Braille functions okay. on these keys right. to make sure they all work right. Great. And um, it, it's it's pretty nice. Okay, it's so pretty nice. Yeah, you said there's a test ballot we could... We can, we can do that. We have one loaded. So okay. it says to begin voting, insert your card. And mm -hmm. I don't know if your cameras are going to pick that up. Okay. But um, what we can do is here is 
most people are familiar with your traditional ballast. Right. It's a lot wider, yeah. about the same height, if you yep. will. And what happens is you will come into a polling place and express the desire to use the vote machine, and okay. we will prepare a ballot for you. And then we'll substitute this. It's called an activation card. Right. We'll substitute this for the actual ballot, right. void out that ballot, but we'll keep the stub off that ballot. Right. That will go with this ballot to right. keep the books correct. Okay. But once we've done that and, and loaded everything up, have everybody ready to go, go ahead and insert it. Okay. And it, you, you always insert these with the uh, cross tag okay. at the top right. Now, if you were using the uh, headphones, it would be talking to you already. Right. It would just be walking you through everything, yeah. um, right. telling you. Uh -huh. no. So wait until it's going to key up. Okay. And right. it's telling us um, how you can go yeah. about right. moving and, forward. And this is what it would be reading to Absolutely. the person through the headphones. Absolutely. All right. And, and so this right. is the ballot. Now, obviously, it's, it's simply yeah, it's a, um, a test, fun ballot, if you will. Ballot. Correct. And uh -huh. it's only one page. The ballots um, um, for the November will general be. will be more, right. obviously. But um, and I, as I said, the first screen will indicate all 59 precincts. And, we, and, and an election judge would necessarily help somebody get that far. Right. And then step away. And of course, these okay. machines would have blinders and it would all be confidential as well. Right. Um, but, but essentially, you can take it from here and it, it, it's reading, it would tell you through the earphones um, how many races there are, right. how many choices there are, what are the individual choices. And through the Braille keypad, you can navigate um, up and down and um, decide you know, and then you press the enter button for which of the candidates, if you will, okay. that you'd like to vote for. Yeah, I don't know how well the camera can pick this up, but the test ballot uh, has a fav favorite dog breed, favorite beach, favorite way to f spend free time, and a couple of uh, test qu proposition questions um, about election day being a national holiday and about Saturday voting. Um, so I'll just go ahead and go with the, uh, well, I've only been, I've only been to one of those. <laughs> and, I, and I should say, if, if the camera's not picking up, you can just press the whole, yeah, it doesn't oh, matter. Okay. Um, there's write-in capabilities for this as well. So yeah, I, I, a, I, a, I um, see that. Um, a keyboard kind of would show up. Okay. Test the right. Test the writing. All right, and um, all right. So then we click review selection. Yep. And of course, at this time, as the prompts indicate, you can certainly go back. Right. Yep. And, and revisit all the issues if you'd like or move forward if you're satisfied. And, and of course, if you have your um, earphones mm -hmm. plugged in and It'll on, it, re it's reminding right. you of all of this. And, all right, so I'll just and then before print. you can print the ballot, it It'll once again, one more, time. One more yeah. time, it lets you go backwards if you would like. Yeah, wish, wish the uh, envelope had all these warnings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right. So the printed ballot would then be taken. So go ahead and pull that out, straight out, and you can review. Now, obviously, right. the real uh, ballot will probably take up all but right. the last inch or two of yeah. that piece of paper. 
and that's okay. fine. Then, um, depending on the judge who's right. helping, the ballot will get stamped with the official ballot stamp like all mm -hmm. other ballots right. do. And then that ballot will go in a secrecy sleeve okay. and march it over to whatever precinct right. it belongs yeah, in. It and it goes in the precinct and box. And it's counted the same way every other ballot's counted. Well, it really is. Um, the mechanics of the count is we have um, the machines that do the tabulation um, have trays that slide. Right. So you would slide, mm -hmm. you know, uh, oftentimes they'll do all of the um, activation cards first because they're smaller. Right. And, and the machines accommodate those with, with no problem at all. Okay. And again, um, it's a great machine. Anybody can use it. And um, with all the Braille, it's, um, I've been told by um, um, blind people that I've dealt with, we've, we've run this past the Laurel Group a few months that, ago. That's a good group to work with. And, they're, they're good and the folks. Billings Group, I think only just a week or two ago. Okay, yeah, and the Montana Federation for yes, the Blind. And uh, bought positive feedback um, from those people, and we're glad great. to hear that. That's, we really are. That's great. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, we are about out of time here, so Kevin Gillen from Yellowstone County Election Office, thank you for uh, talking with us today. And again, if you're a person with a disability and have questions or concerns about voting or about accessing your right to vote, um, Lyft is ready and able to assist you. You can give us a call in Billings at 259-5181 or uh, if you're further in eastern Montana, our Glendive office can be reached at 406-948-8500 or you can find us online at lift.org. I'm Jed Barton. Thank you for watching.